This is just a quick video of uh, Belgrade Machine's wind turbine. This is the bare bones kit that he made and he was gracious enough to let me have this uh, particular version of it. This is going to be a vertical windmill and this is the rotor, is a dual rotor, quarter inch steel. Uh, I told him, you know, there would be no way for me to um, to cut something like this. It's next to impossible. I think he has a plasma cutter, and um, yeah. So this is going to be the stator for the uh, wind turbine. This is uh, again donated to me by C. Wayne Hawk. He has a lot of uh, wind turbines that he made himself and um, yeah so this is this is a piece of the magnet that I'm going to use uh, as a template. This is only a quarter inch. The one that I'm actually going to use are one inch by one inch by half an inch so I don't want to start um, messing with that. This is a quarter inch, it's easier to move and I just using this to mark the positions. Of course this is definitely not the way to do it. Uh, this is just my way and um, do not attempt to do this on your own uh, using my instructions anyway and this is not a tutorial. Uh, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with making a wind turbine like this even though this is uh, pretty much a, a kit that is almost done. Uh, even the assembly, the assemblage of, of this uh, turbine can be um, dangerous because uh, there's a lot of heavy metal pieces and if any of them nick you or uh, drop on you or whatever you're gonna be you're gonna be in trouble. I actually dropped the rotor. It slipped out of my hand. It dropped on the carpeting, and then of course it nicked the. It made a small mark, a small mark on my uh, flooring here. So I'm gonna cover it with the carpeting, so my wife wouldn't notice it. So definitely it can be dangerous. So this is just a quick video to show what I've done so far. Um, next thing is I'm just going to glue down the magnets with uh, JB Weld. This is what I'm going to use, JB Weld Epoxy. Um, I don't think I, I will be using uh, fiberglass to encapsulate them. Maybe maybe they will last longer uh, if you encapsulate the neomagnets but I will definitely spray paint it, put a coat of uh, black paint on it. What I'm doing here is I'm marking the spaces for the magnets, 12 on each side and because the magnets I'm using is um, one inch by in, one inch and half inch, they're kind of strong, so I don't want to mess with it. And I have I have uh, one inch magnets that are quarter inch, so they're not as strong. So I'm going to use it uh, to mark the magnet positions, so they're they're less dangerous. They're still very strong. So definitely do not follow what I'm doing because this is just my way of doing it because I don't know any better way and I just drew lines across uh, 30 degrees apart and um, over here is the top dead center position and the uh, upper plate is the same thing. There's a top dead position. So 
Now I'm just marking the different squares where the magnets will go and I'm gonna get a spacer, a wood spacer to separate the magnets when I install them so they don't collide together because they're half inch magnets when, when they collide you're not going to be able to separate them. I've done quite a few of the spaces already so I pretty much know approximately where and then of course I have the ruler here to measure and go from there. Alright, this is uh, just the beginning. Uh, I hope I can make a couple more videos. Thanks for watching. Of my solar engine. This uses a much smaller motor so it spins very well especially when I have strong sun and this kind of circuit you can find very easily if you just google solar engine and of course just saying have a nice day